Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another of our video, our weekly market outlook class, where we look for today to set up in the markets and see how we can uh, potentially look to take advantage of some opportunities in the markets. Okay, so uh, we'll jump straight into it, no time wasting. Um, so we'll look at, we'll start by looking at the economic calendar for the week. So forexfactory.com, um, just refresh and see the events for the week okay i'm just going to filter this out to show us just the high impact news and that's the high and medium impact news huh? okay so yeah so today is a bank holiday in uh in in uk so i'll probably see some slower price action from the pound uh but however you can see there's no much going, there's nothing much going on today except for core retail or retail sales that is already out from the aussie uh, but from tomorrow we begin to see so tomorrow remember this is the last trading week of the month um the month ends on 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 Thursday, so from now to Thursday, we have four days, four trading days, uh, before we get into a new month, right? And you can see, um, usually end of month, we we'll, you know we tend to see some uh, right, say impulse move in the markets. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind. Now on Tuesday, we would have quite a number of red news. So let me make this black. So we we'll have quite a number of red news uh, coming up on Tuesday, uh, but on the from the Aussie and from the USD, right? So we have. The Reserve Bank of Australia um, is going to be giving a speech. Obviously, markets uh, will judge the sentiment of how it's of you know basically how that goes. Uh, but by 2 p.m. tomorrow, there's going to be um, the S and P uh, CS composites. So basically, this news is going to be out by 2 p.m. And then by 3 p.m., we have the consumer confidence. Uh, report and also the job, job opening so this will be high impact news between two and three we'll see um depending on how this uh comes out we'll see some volatility in the dollar uh, especially during this period now remember like i always tend to say i don't necessarily treat the news i just pay attention to the news so that i um, know when to stay out of the market or how to manage my current open positions okay now on wednesday we also have the aussie and the aussie cpi report will be out it's going to be by two thirty. so we're going to see um some strength or weakness in the aussie this week we're going to look at some you know we have quite a number of high impact news coming up on the aussie um, depending on how good or bad they come out so you'll see some really good strength or weakness on the aussie so by then 2 30 a.m there's going to be cpi reports from the australia and then on, um, then there's also going to be, so this is going to be an all day news. There's going to be um, the Spanish CPI reports from Euro. And then at uh, 1.15, there's also going to be the non-farm employment change, the ADP non-farm employment change as well. So I uh, don't want to go into every single detail, but you can see all the major news to pay attention to. And then on Friday, right? So on Friday is the main one where we have the NFP. Right, um, so on Friday, we're going to, because that's the last, that's the first Friday, NFP comes out. Uh, is released on the first Friday of every month. So first Friday happens to be the first day of that particular month. So we're going to be having the NFP um, for the uh, uh, for the month uh, from the um, USD. Remember, the dollar is uh, is looking quite the dollar is supposed to be weak, but it's looking quite strong. Um, the uh, what do you call it? Um, Powell, that's the the governor of the reserve bank um you know on his speech on thursday was it thursday or friday made mention of the fact that the um the government is willing to back the dollar and increase rates if needed and that caused a spike in the dollar or you know basically brought in more strength so it's so we'll see how uh whether the dollar is able to follow that up and if it does was you know probably uh, it's probably keep us away from the market a little bit or maybe on the sidelines on certain pairs. Okay, so those are the economic uh, reports for the week um, that we're looking up forward to. Now we'll jump over straight to our weekly market to the charts, right? So we'll go over to the charts and look for, um, basically just look at uh, uh, some pairs. So we're going to start off by looking at the DXY. I made mention of something on the DXY last week. Uh, you know, it's from a point of, uh, you know, it was a, it was at the point where I made mention of the fact that dollar continues to, if it's going to get weak, it needs to get weak um, from that point, but it didn't, right? The dollar, um, at least in relation to other currency, is still very strong, uh, even though the overall structure of the market is actually quite bearish, um, at least on the daily time frame. But if you go over to the weekly time frame, you might begin to see something a little bit different, right? So, from the weekly time frame here, you would probably you could you could see that we're looking at uh so let me use this instead. Uh with you. 
So you could see that we're looking at, you know, a bullish structure, right? And maybe we get to a new high. Uh, this is relatively speaking, and you know, overall, the dollar has the dollar is known for getting stronger. Um, however, however, you also have to respect the fact that um, the immediate structure is quite bearish. Price seems to be reaccumulating, at least on the weekly time frame. But when you go down to the daily chart, it seems to be in a distribution mode. And this, this here could very well be a redistribution where price is looking to, you know, um, you know, just grab the highs. Uh, let me make this a different color. Where price might just be looking to, you know, grab liquidity above this high uh, and then come back down. So this week is very, very paramount. So I want to see how if the market closes back down within this area here for the week, we could see dollar weaken. But don't bank on dollar weakness. It could may or may not happen. Um, and if dollar continues to get strong, my favorite pair to trade would be the uh, USDJPY, right? Um, I don't really like looking for shots on USD and GBP USD at this time. Uh, but USDJPY, I like the idea of looking for longs on that. Also, um, I think uh, USDCHF, but mostly USDJPY because of basically the JPY basket seems to uh, be moving uh, quite upwards now so dxy looking quite strong and uh, now let's jump straight over to some pairs um which we just quickly run through okay so we'll begin with looking at gold now gold is um so made some interesting move last week however um in relation to metals silver appears to be quite stronger okay so gold and silver which are precious metals treated against the dollar um uh, appears to be so okay let me just replace so this here you can see that we may probably be coming up from a um an area of interest right you know this you know this whole this move here um you know on a smaller time frame might could potentially be a an accumulation model where price you know basically uh um how do i put this now so we're gonna look at that right um, so basically where price is basically accumulated and could begin to push up. This is exactly what I am personally looking out for. I'm looking for that continuous push up. And I like the way price has cleared this liquidity. I like the way it did that with this. And also I, I was able to get involved in this, in a trade here. I'll show you that in a bit, um, from an, uh, from an, a previous leftover SND zone, uh, which I was able to catch. So for the week, what I would like to see, so let me go down to the one hour time frame here. So what I like to see on gold for the week is for price to actually come up and clear this liquidity. This liquidity is uh is my main interest, right? If price clears this liquidity, I'm going to be very bullish on gold, right? I'm already bullish on gold. I'm already involved in the position here, as you can see. Uh, but I'm going to be much much bullish on on gold if we begin to if we clear this liquidity for the week, right? So this is this is in my in my opinion the hurdle that price needs to um to overcome. Now if you look at this from you can see how price began to make a um a structural move where it's making a low a higher low and a higher high, right? So like so, uh, so you can see how price is making this higher low and higher high, uh, something. So higher low like this, just that, right? You could see the structure that price is putting in in place. And as it's making this move, it's not leaving back any imbalance. It's coming back to close the imbalance. You can see here, there was an imbalance in price. Price came back, filled that imbalance. Again, price, there was an imbalance here. Price came, filled that imbalance. There was an imbalance here. Price came, filled that imbalance. Again, price aggressively pushed up. What did it do? It came back. Feel that imbalance. The price is not leaving behind gaps, which is quite positive for um, the bulls in this market. However, um, from this low, basically to this high, you call it this high, uh, price came back here and uh, is pushing away. Now, this push away doesn't mean anything until and unless price comes and take out this high. So if price were to make a new uh, higher high, then that will be very interesting. I'll be, you know, um, looking for bullish setup more aggressively on this one uh if we're able to clear this high so you can see the structure now delivering to us is it has been very very bullish right uh at least on the one hour time frame not on the uh not on the you know not on the higher time frame basis you can see how you know since making this high here 
on the one hour time chart. So right? it's making this high here. Price has only made lower highs, right? Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, right? Price never made a higher low, only made lower highs. That means uh, the, the, basically the, the, the pressure, the selling pressure was much, much um, than the bullish, bullish pressure. And then since price came into this zone, this area here, if you're looking at it from a standpoint, a standpoint of Y curve, right? Um, so if you're looking at this from a standpoint of Y curve, so let me just do this because it's getting quite difficult. <laughs> let me delete this. Uh, delete this. Delete this. Delete this. Uh, okay, just want to clear some of these white dots. So just make it. Uh, okay. Okay, well, back to, okay, so now just looking at this. So from a standpoint of Y curve, you can look at this as, you know, our SC, basically, uh, um, not SC, our uh, preliminary supply, uh, um, selling climbers, so our SC, right? Basically, our selling climbers, uh, our automatic rally, that's why it's pushed back up. It came back, made an ST, that's a secondary test. Uh, this would be uh, basically liquidity build up. And then price came back down here, made a um, a spring, right? Or an uptrust. And then we had the first push up or sign of strength. And then we had a second sign of strength. Price came back, filled this up, and then began to move. So for me, from a clearly white cops perspective, this is a clear distribution schematics, right? And what what basically, uh, sorry, not distribution, accumulation schematics, are basically uh, meaning that probably most likely um, uh, probably seen some accumulation of of orders here um, to the upside. So as long as price continue to maintain, right? As long as price continue to hold this lows that we're looking at a very, very good chance of price continuing higher. So if, what I want to see now, I'm already in this trade, right? What I want to see is for price to take out this high and then I'll keep looking for those moves upward because on the um on the on the one hour time frame here, you can see its price is actually very, very bullish. Um on the four hour time frame, you can see again here that price has broken bullish. Um as well, but just one. So on the four-hour time frame, this was the last high here, which price took away at this point. And so we're looking at the first highs. So if price were to take away this high, if price was to clear this high, then we could begin to see more moves to the upside. Um, so that's what I'll be looking to see. Um, and uh, that's my outlook on on uh, on gold. Now, so for personally for the week, what could you be looking to do? Uh, it's all is entirely up to you and how you trade and your trading style. Uh, but um, I will be wait, looking for opportunities to buy if we clear this high. Now you can, right? You can maybe drop down to the 15 minutes and start looking for structure to trade, right? So you could actually, uh, you know, um, begin to look for move to trade. Um, to the upside. Um, but personally, I would want to see price clear this high first before I look to get involved anymore on this street. Okay. Now let's jump over to um EU. Let's jump over to EU. Um, so EU is now I just need to zoom out a little bit and you'll see that the even though we're breaking down here, right? The overall structure of this market is actually bullish, right? Uh, you know, we uh, we spoke about this one for a long time last year. Price was very, 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 very bearish, right? And then price began to break bullish here and is still staying bullish, right? So the idea is the market wants to continue to hold this orders to the upside, okay? Now, um, on a daily time frame, um, so if you zoom in a little bit here, on a daily time frame, you'd see that price went from, let me go back a little bit. On a daily time frame here, you would see that price made this high, right? Uh, let me use this instead. Because the price came from this low to this high, to this low, to a higher high, to a higher low, to a higher high, to a higher low, and the higher high, higher low, higher high. So um, this was the last move that cleared liquidity. However, the actual move that, that cleared this high, right, came from 
here. Okay, so let's say on a weekly time frame, this would be the actual move. But however, on a daily time frame, this is the move that created this high. Now, ideally, you'd want to see price hold be, be, um, um, above this, this low here. But what we had instead was that price um, made a, you know, as essentially taking out the slope. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm now looking for selling opportunity on this price. I'm actually not. I'm not looking for opportunities to sell this because I understand that the predominant structure in market, the predominant um, direction of price has actually been very bullish. If I drop down to... Uh, drop, you know, push up to a daily chart, right? Uh, let's remove all these white things and just the nuisance, okay? Um, okay, so if you look at it from a, you know, from this standpoint here, you'd see that uh, the structure is quite clear. Bullish, 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 bullish. And now we're probably looking to continue go, going bullish. However, because price took out that daily liquidity, uh, daily um, um, protected low, as I like to call it, then it means the actual protected low would be this low here. So what it means is there's still room for price to keep going down and still remain bullish and then maybe continue going up. So what I would like to see is for price to, you know, um, to, so price to, to hold, right? So if we, if I take this now and uh, draw something like this, you can see we had an imbalance here. The price has come and tapped into, okay? And uh, if we drop down to, let's say the four hour chart, and try and go into that area. Let's see if we can find uh, an actual area where price might want to stop. I'm looking at this, uh, get this one here. There's an imbalance here, so let's see, maybe something like this. Okay. Okay, so uh, I go back here now. So now the idea, or at least what I'm looking at, the way I'm looking at this is um, price could very well, you know, what I want to see really is for price to take out this high. So if he wants to start going up, just like gold, I want to see it take out this high. Otherwise, it can go down for like here and come back here, and then I'll look for confirmation to continue going up. So I'm going to stay away from this one until we either see price clear this high or price come back here and give me confirmation to buy. Okay, so that's the way I'm looking at this. Um, and so you know, when this is just the start of the week, I'm going to keep that level. So you, I think you'll see it better on the one hour time frame. Um, Let's do this like so. Yeah, so this high here now is my interest. I don't see price come and clear this high, right? So if price comes up and take out this high, uh, then I would be looking for confirmation to continue buying. Uh, we could, if price takes out this high, we could see price explode, right? If price takes out this high, we could see price just explode. Uh, very, very similar thing on, on gold as well. If price takes out that high that I mentioned, we could see price explode. And that is on the side of the market I like to get involved in where price just moves uh, because that's where the money is made. Okay, so uh, my outlook on on on, uh, on EU and gold, you have them quite similar. GU, uh, we were looking at, you know, I was very optimistic about GU last week, but price did not react. You know, we, um, I think some of you were here, Chinese, I'm sure you were here. We spoke about this move here, expecting price to hopefully clear this high. And if it does that, um, going, you know, it, it would have been, you know, it would have, would have probably seen price really shoot up. Same, quite same, you know, same, um, similar story. Uh, with price bullish markets, we are within an area of interest. Basically, we are within um the last down move for the up move um that you know and expecting price to. This is my liquidity target here. This is my overall target. So what I'm looking for basically is for price to deliver structure to me in a way that I'm interested in. I just keep looking for buys up to this area. That's the idea I'm looking out for here. I'm not interested in selling this, right? Uh, I'm only looking for except this. You know, if price takes this out and then maybe I start looking for sales. But until then, I'm still going to stay on the sidelines until I see bullish momentum come back into this market if he wants to. And then would we'll, you know, look to take this up. As you can see, I have my liquidity target set to here. That is a lot of move, you know. Um, that is less if price begins to move. Um, and uh, the reason you wait for price to begin to move is because 
you know, if you're like, oh, that means if I start buying here, I'll make a lot of profits. You know, let me see how many pips that is. That will be, uh, what you call it? Uh, that's basically about 550 pips. I like, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money. But uh, because it's, you're not you're not the hands that move the market, um, markets if market if the price has not shown you what it wants to do and you jump in and you could have something like this where the price flush out and then you find yourself sitting on your tail. Okay, so confirmation that's this the the reason behind confirmation. Um, and you know obviously you definitely want to trade with stop losses. You you always want to do that. If you're aggressive, uh, although that will be trading without confirmation, somebody wants to just get involved and start buying. I wouldn't advise that, but yeah, if, if you're that risk averse and then you can maybe put your stop loss below this low, it doesn't make sense to put it there because market could just very well come back and clear it before maybe going up. So it's all about waiting for the money to come in, like I like to see, and then begin to follow it upwards. Okay. Um, so GBB USD, Euro USD, um, gold, quite similar idea, waiting for um for for bullish push on those now the XA USD NZD USD I'm not really touching those don't like the way they look uh okay and then um what, what um USDJPY so USDJPY has been bullish uh, I made mention of this quite a number of times price was bullish we've cleared this high I know you know it's possible that we could see price drop back down and then begin to move but price doesn't have to move that way and I always like to follow price so if price wants to continue to move up well very well i'll i'll, I'll keep on looking to do that now on a there's a trade I, I i i was looking to to take this money so you can see it here so this is uh if you're interested in that that's yours but this is a trade i, I you know i'm currently looking to get involved in i have a pending buy stock here like so um this is the one is to two uh just about one is to two uh that's if you factor in spreads as well um, it's a buy stop um, at this point and then looking to uh, my stop loss below here now obviously I would the, uh, I'll take out my first partial at this point and I'll look to just trail flat price if it moves well that would be let's see how price moves so the way price is now is interesting what I want to see is for price to clear this up. just just come up I already have a pending order on this one so if price comes up here it takes me in and then you know my stop loss is here and I'm looking to take this move so that's Probably a trade idea you can look to to a trade you can look to to get involved in. Uh, but if price comes down and it comes down here, then this trade is no longer valid. I won't take it again. So what I want to see is for price to come up um to around 146.42. Take the trade. My stop loss just around 146 uh 46, right? 146.45. And then my target, my first target is going to be 147 um zero nine or something like that um and then we'll see if we can make a quick one is to two profit on this one and you know that'll be it so i'm still overall you can see um you can see the some of the trades i i got involved here uh where are you um for the week you can see this was a trade i think i ended up with a minus one there uh this one very nice trade this one also very nice trade um so basically i think i had a Plus two percent, uh, plus two percent. As I, I'm still on, I'm still on this street. At least some part of this position is open. This one I made, I think, uh, plus one is one point five, and then the markets came back and closed me, stopped me out at break even, and now I'm looking to get involved here. Uh, if price gives me an entry, if it comes down and clear me out, that's that's fine. So if it gives me an entry, uh, we'll look to hold um this move at least to this point, and I'll take out a first partial. And then I'll look to manage the rest of the position um, and rise the trend as much as I can. Okay, so um, GBP, USD, um, Euro USD, uh, again, um, XAU USD, USD JPY, sim, uh, bullish, bullish, bullish on those ones. Uh, on the yen pairs, I'm still inclined toward the bullish side. Um, all the XXS, USD, um, J, JPY pairs. I'm leaning towards being um, the bullish side on those one. I was looking for, I, I think I got the minus one here. Yeah, you can see that I got the minus one here. I was looking for continuation here. The market gave me an entry and failed. Um, and then I've not touched this since this point. And uh, so this week, as we're heading into this week, I'm looking for, you can see how price is beginning to build up structurally. 
so if we get a move, I'll probably look to get involved once I find a setup that uh, I like, and I'll still be looking to take out this highs. Okay, so um, Euro US um, XXX JPY pairs. I'm leaning towards looking for buying opportunity on those. Uh, is there anyone else quickly? Talk? Okay, so let me just quickly look at some Aussie pairs because we're having some. Uh, I think the Aussie is going to be quite volatile. It little bit depends on how the because there's lots of a number of high impact news coming out on the Aussie this week. So let's see if we can find um any clear clear trade setups. I don't see anything here. Uh, I don't see anything here. The market is bearish. Okay. And let me see. So we're only looking for sell opportunities. Uh, okay. Yes, so let me do this. Um, so let's drop down to one hour time frame here. What do we see? Market is building up push this low to this high. Uh, okay, so yeah, the only thing I can see here is price probably should, uh, if it clears this low, then I might now begin to look for sales. But until that, this is because remember, I'm looking for sales because the overall structure of this market is bearish. And that makes the most sense that we could see price uh, continue to stay bearish. However, keep in mind that, you know, it's been bearish for quite some time. So uh, and then we, we'll see how the market. uh let me let me look at the weekly charts just quickly. Uh, because from the weekly charts, okay, so this is interesting. Uh, from the weekly charts, we might actually be looking a little bit bullish. Five broke up once, broke up twice, and then it's pulling back down to this area, which is the Huh. Okay, so uh, now we are looking at something slightly different. Uh, let me see this. This is actually the last area. Left price came absorbed below it and it's pushing high. Okay, so on the weekly time frame, this looks is looking bearish, right? So from a weekly standpoint, the market is looking quite bearish. And if that's the case, this would be potential uh liquidity targets for the higher time frame. Let's see. Uh okay. Okay. Um, okay, so um, Aussie card, Aussie card is interesting now. It's not, I, I haven't really touched this one for a while, but it's looking interesting now to look for longs. Um, from you know, from a weekly standpoint, from a daily time frame, it looks very bearish. However, just looking at it from the weekly time frame now, it's looking rather interesting. Uh, because if price really wants to hold, we are at an area where price would should, should begin to hold. So, um, let's see, let's see. Let me go back to the four hour chat now and let's see what we might look for. Now, this, this particular trade is not something that might set up anytime soon. Um, no, 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 it's not one that might set up anytime soon. What are we seeing? Structurally, we're redist distributing, distributing. Uh, this is, this here. This is low, the cost. And then this is the high that costs this low. And then this is the high that costs this low. Oh, we're not yet there yet. So we're not there yet. Um, that means this is the high that we need to take out if we really want to start going up from here. Has it done that? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't closed above it. Okay, so from a four-hour point of view, I think this is the high that needs to be cleared. If this high gets cleared, right, so if price breaks above this high, we could begin to see this move to the upside. So that's what I'll be waiting for. Watch for this. So I'm going to keep this on my watch list um, for for potential move. I think I'll just add a chat a lot on it. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so I was bit for this setup here. Now I'm, I, I was really, I was interested in saying, oh, let me look for sales. But right now, I don't think I want to look for sales. I'll just wait um, to see if we get bullish uh, break. I hope what I preferably bullish break and then another bullish break and then that will be interesting or or better still yeah so, so maybe a bullish break this will be the break the first one and then maybe a second break maybe price might drop back down and then I'll look for that move or makes the second break and just continue to go so um and this is the follow chart so we might see this move this week owing to the fact that we have lots of pine back news from the Aussie coming out for the week so that could happen um yeah it could happen or if it, if the if the report comes out bad and the market is not ready to to go up we could see price flush down in which case i'll do nothing with this one okay so uh yeah i think that's all i'm going to take this is just a weekly market outlook class remember if you want to uh join the full classes or join some of the cutting edge trading room classes uh, fund your accounts get added to the telegram channel and yeah you'd be able to join me for those classes on tuesdays and when is this okay so does the NZD nothing much here so that's all we'll see out i'll be able to have my time with permits for now and uh, i hope you guys were able to grab a thing or two and um yeah that's about it for our class today i'll be uploading this on youtube if you're watching this from the youtube please ensure very 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 helpful like please leave a like if possible leave comments down there subscribe to the channel it helps me quite a lot at least for the youtube metrics so i can be uh visible uh but otherwise i think that's about it today we did cover quite a number of things not many interesting things in the market yet because we're still waiting for the market to decide especially some of the pairs i prefer to trade i'm still waiting for that decisive move in the market to give us um, the impact of right to to begin to push for those um those moves okay so thank you very much everyone have a wonderful wonderful trading week and remember to always treat the proper risk management cheers everyone have a wonderful day